at least four people were killed. The gunman was shot dead by police. Questions are being raised about security in the country. The attacker was released from jail last December. Andreas Schida is an Austrian member of the European Parliament who serves on the Committee on Foreign Affairs and joins us now. Andreas, hello. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon to you. So the attacker has been identified as an Islamist terrorist released from jail just last December, which I guess raises a number of questions. What are the questions that are prominent in your mind, Andreas? For me, the question is, of course, is he part of a real uh, network or was he just some kind of admirer of uh, Islamic State and therefore doing this attack at the end? It doesn't make any difference, but for the future consequences, it is quite important. And, and what lessons do you expect will be or should be learned by the authorities in Austria after this? Assuming they need to be learned. I have to say, Austria and especially Vienna never was used to have any terrorist attack or any public tension. So therefore... Uh, we enjoyed a lot of liberty, freedom, and uh, maybe also s sleepiness uh, in the city. So for the security people, the policemen and, and others, I think it was the first experience to have a, a real terrorist attack. They made it quite well. But for the future, of course, it will change our society because security issues might be also in the everyday uh, uh, life. We are not used to see policemen with helmets uh, on every corner, and since yesterday we see this. Um, but I hope uh, that we will not change, let's say, our, our living mood completely, because this is what terrorists want. They want to impose on society fear, anxiousness, and all these kind of things. And what we need to send them is that uh, our democracy is quite strong and we will not change the life mood at all. Okay. Look, you sit, you sit Andreas, in the European Parliament and your, 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 your point there is it would be wrong to overreact because that is, among other things, what terrorists want to, want to happen. But should there be a reaction to what has happened in Vienna, especially after what has happened in France, in, in Nice, for example, and we've seen President Macron of, of France reacting, raising his voice as something of a leading exponent of a, a reaction, a clear, firm position when it comes to Islamist terrorism. What is, your, what is your take on a reaction across Europe involving Europe as a whole to incidents like the one we saw in Vienna and have seen in France recently, but of course before that? I think we have to find out if there is a linkage between the attacks in, in France and those in Vienna or if it's just uh, that people are copying uh, these uh, bad ideas from one to each other. And, uh, of course, we have to work more clearly also on the question how we can have... What's, let's say, the question is what went wrong with the biography of this guy? He grew up in Austria. He had a double citizenship, but he, let's say, he was a classical Austrian. He didn't grow up in a, let's say, uh, negative neighborhood. He even grew up in one of the suburbs, which were quite fancy and nice. <laughs> And then finally he decided to, to become a terrorist. So I think we have to work out what went wrong that we did not see. There are some questions. Now, he was, he, he was uh, seen by the secret police. He was observed. He, he was seen as an IS uh, sympathy taker. So what happened that he was released from prison so early? Why the, the state police, which is the secret service, we're not uh, controlling him so much. So this, this is a question, and how could a guy like him get all these weapons, which are not easy to get here in Austria? Is there a lot to be done, maybe more to be done, when it comes to sharing the lessons of, a, of an awful incident like this? There is already a good deal of coordination when it comes to sharing intelligence and sharing experience across Europe, and that obviously includes Britain. The UK has left, is leaving the European Union, but is still quite a significant player in all of this. Is there a case for more coordination, more effective coordination, closer coordination? I, I think the police forces, of course, they need a stronger cooperation in exchanging uh, not only names and uh, of, of people, but also how, of, of methods, like how they do the profiling, how they treat people, how, how they, they, they work uh, uh, behind the uh, all, all this and probably also uh, I think it's, it's important and all the politicians from the left is also from the from the from the right and the, the government they said it is it was one negative guy it was one terrorist it is not that all uh, 
people who believe in Islam are, are guilty. So to, to make this divide clearly between Islamistic uh, terror and uh, uh, religious uh, belief, which has nothing in, in, in common. But mm -hmm. maybe we have to start a stronger dialogue also with, uh, with uh, the religions club so that they also get some tools how they can early warning when they see a guy is, let's say, moving up into terrorist uh, uh, circumstances so that there is some er early warning. Uh, we thought we had a good system, but probably we didn't. Well, I mean, you, you say that, of course, Andres, and, and you make a, a fair and a strong point. There is always a case for more vigilance, more alertness to evidence or clues of what might be about to take place. But there's no such thing, is there, as 100% security? Certainly this, these, this individual was armed with with a weapon and opened fire on the streets of Vienna. But other terrorist attacks can and have and, and will no doubt take place. And it's not possible to guarantee that that will not happen. This is, is true. And I've made this the lessons which, we, which makes us all in Vienna so sad because we were not used to this. Our inner belief was there is no threat in, in our everyday life, neither in the underground nor on public spaces. And especially yesterday where a lot of people went out because it was the evening before lockdown. So everybody used the chance to get his final beer somewhere in a garden. And we had 20 degrees, which is extremely hot for November. So people were out in the streets. And this probably was also what the terrorist was, was using. And uh, for sure, yeah, uh, people will now look differently when they go out. Okay, and Andreas, Andreas, let, let, let us hope that people yeah. share, and I'm sure many, many will people will share that sense of of perspective about even such an awful incident as this. Andreas Scheider from the European Parliament there talking to us. Now we just got time uh, before the top of the hour. Danny Finkelstein's joining us to talk about his piece, his his column in the comment pages of 